So today our webinar is about uh, backup and restore Redis cluster using Stash. So uh, let's dive into the contents. So here is the table of contents. First, we will install uh, kubedb. Then we will install Stash in a, a kind cluster. Then we will uh, deploy Redis cluster using kubedb. And after that, we will insert some dummy data and we will back up that data using stash and after that we will create some uh, disaster scenarios and then we will restore the backup data in the cluster and after that we will have a qa session about your questions so uh, let's move past the installation part so uh, you can install kubedb using these helm commands these will install you the latest version of kubedb and uh, you can learn more about uh, how to run that and how to get license in kubedb.com and uh, for a stash you can uh, follow these helm commands and for a stash license you can uh, go to stash.run to uh, documentation and other uh, other supports and uh, with that let's uh, move on to the live demo first we will have to uh, i will introduce you to some crd so one of the crd is uh redis cluster so uh, i have a redis cluster crd in this crd the api version is kubedb.com and uh, kind is redis and uh, and i have configured some other things for redis and important thing is the mode is cluster so we will have redis in sharded mode in the cluster mode we have uh, three master and one replica so there will be three shard and in each shard there will be one master and one replica each and uh, the version is 6.2.5. This will use the image uh, Redis official release 6.2.5. And the termination policy is wipeout. So uh, this means that uh, when we delete this data database, it will delete all everything, uh, including PVC secrets and other things, all other all the things it created. So we will have no trace left of the database. So I have. Uh, put this termination policy to create the disaster scenarios you can use other termination policy you yeah, to know more you can go to our uh, doc and uh, learn that uh, which termination policy switches you and uh, let's go and uh, let's deploy the redis cluster yaml so here i am watching pod and uh, redis instance and in, in here you can see the Redis instance in provisioning state. We have uh, we will have three shard, and uh, in each shard there is two replica. So there will be six ports, and uh, when all the ports are running, this uh, status of the database will be in Redis state. Then we will do other operations. So this provisioning is done by uh, done by our uh, kubedb operator. So you can, uh, if you install kubedb using Helm, you can see the kubedb ports in the kubedb namespace. So you can see we have uh, five ports in the kubedb namespace. So this is the provisioner that provisions the database and uh, uh, other does the other operation, other ports. So uh, let's wait for a few moments for this database to get ready. So in this, uh, I, meanwhile, I can get you the generated YAML of this Redis. So you can see that uh, there are some other fields that I have not provided that is defaulted by our kubedb operator. And uh, here, another section is uh, disable auth. So I, am, I don't want to use auth when I log into Redis database. So that's why this field is true. You can uh, configure these fields. And uh, storage class is a standard. So that is the default storage class in kind cluster. And uh, we have uh, 500 milli CPU and one GB memory request. Okay, so uh, data database is ready. So now we can insert some data. We can interact, uh, in the, interact with the database using the service. So let's get the service. So we can use this service to interact with the database, but uh, for this demonstration demonstration purpose, I will just exit into the pod and run the commands. So let's uh, set some data. <clears throat> okay, I have uh, put some data in the Redis uh, in Redis database. 
now let's take the backup so before taking backup we, we i i want to introduce you with some stash crd so the first one is uh repository so <clears throat> repository is the thing where we will store the data it will refer to actual repository in some cloud so here uh, you can see in the spec section the backend is gcs so we will use a gcs bucket as the backend as the repository for backup you can use uh, s3 or other packet as you want and these storage secret is uh, the credentials that is uh, used that will be used to store data in the cloud so uh, let's create the repository okay so before creating repository you need to create the secret i have already created the secret in the demo name space so you can see i have this gcs secret and this will be used in the repository yaml so to create this secret uh, you can do this you can uh, export these variables uh, and after that you can create the secret using this command so you can uh, find these commands in the stash documentation so to do and uh, now let's create this repository okay so the repository is created so let's get this repository so you can see we only have name field and the age field because we we don't didn't take any backup so that's why we don't have any size snapshot count or other fields set so now let's move on to the next crd so the next crd is backup configuration so uh, this backup configuration configures the backup so it is it runs a cron job and uh you can uh, schedule this cron job so i have scheduled it for uh running five minutes so in each five minutes it will uh it will trigger a job and that job will take a backup and <clears throat> yeah here we need to uh refer the repository in which we will store the data so i have referred that i want to store the data in the G in this gcs repo repository which i have created um, earlier and in the target we need to provide the reference of the app binding which uh, which database we want to take backup so app binding is another apps code crd this is automatically created when you provision your database using kubedb otherwise you need to create this app binding manually to take this backup so let's get app binding in the demo name so, so you can see the we have a app binding name redis cluster the same name as the database name so this app binding is referred in the backup configuration so that the the backup configuration will take backup of this database so this redis cluster database so let's apply this backup configuration okay so i am watching backup configuration and backup session in this terminal so you can see a backup uh, configuration is created and you can see the schedule the phase is ready so it will <coughs> take backup in every five minutes so we have uh, an another tool that is test cli using that you can trigger backup at any moment so we don't have to wait for the for the schedule so let's trigger okay so the backup is triggered you can see one backup session is created and it is in running state so it will take backup of this uh of this database so let's wait a few moments for this to be successful and uh as uh, and when we don't need this backup to be run we can just pause this backup so we can patch uh spec dot pause to true so that it will be <coughs> paused so now you can see that the post section is true so it won't create any more job so the backup won't be taken for now so we don't need this for this demo but you can you you can schedule you can schedule how you want to take take backup like uh, in every day or every week or every month so uh, you can see the backup is successful so that uh, the data is backed up now uh, let's get this repository so you can see there's <clears throat> in this gcs repo we have uh now size is 519 byte and there is one snapshot and the last successful backup is uh 15 eight seconds ago so that we have a backup so if you want to see that backup we need to let's get this repository so let's get eml of the repository so the, here we have a uh, bucket that's it name is stress testing and prefix is slash demo slash ready slash cluster now let's see in the uh, 
cloud that it, this data exists. Now you can see this is our bucket is test testing. So let's refresh it. So here uh, we should uh, have a demo field. Okay, so this is the demo field. In this demo, we have a Redis section because uh, our uh, path was slash demo slash Redis slash Redis cluster. So this is inside this we have a Redis cluster field or cl cluster directory, and in this directory we have a snapshot directory. So you can see this snapshot one snapshot, and from this time you can see that it's it is created just now. So just two minutes ago. So uh, this is the directory. All the backups will be stored here. And uh, another thing is uh, we can configure how many backup we want. So uh, in this backup configuration, the retention policy, we want to keep the last five. So it will delete the obsolete backups. Now <clears throat> let's create some digital scenarios. So let's just first go to the database and delete the data. Okay, so we are deleting all the data. Okay, now let's try to get this data. There should be no data because we have just deleted the data. So now we want to store this data in the database using uh, a restore session. So let's uh, move to the next CRD, which is restore session. So in the restore session CRD, again, we want to refer to the repository from which we will restore and in the target is same as backup configuration we want to provide the app binding of the uh, database we will restore this data and in the rules section there is a, sna a, sna a snapshot section and we are using latest so we want to use the latest snapshot and when we have multiple snapshot you can uh, you can refer to the snapshot id so that that snapshot will be restored so uh, let's just run this restore session okay so the restore session is running and the status of the database is data restoring it will restore the data and uh, another thing i think you have noticed that uh, for the backup we have a backup configuration but in the restore we don't have a restore configuration only we have restore session because uh, you want to take <coughs> backup in a scheduled manner like every day every week or every month but for restore you don't need a schedule you just want to run it once in a while when you have a disaster scenario so <coughs> this is running and that data is restoring when this uh, restore session is successful we will have this data in the in the database so now it you can see that it is successful and the is test restore it is completed so now let's see that uh, if we have the data in the database so let's so you can see that uh, we can get this data yeah so the data is uh, restored so uh, another disaster scenario we can uh, let's say someone in your organization deleted the whole database and the uh, termination policy was wiped out so all the pvc are gone so now you have don't have any data let's just uh, delete this database to simulate this scenario <clears throat> okay so all the ports are terminating state and the radius object is gone so this will delete all our data now let's see that if any pvc is here so let's watch for the pvc so you can see this pvc is in uh, terminating state so this pvc are uh, <clears throat> deleting so all the data will be gone so after that we will uh, we'll use we'll deploy another database so let's uh, change this yaml so let's just uh, rename this database. Okay, so let's just keep the other fields. So these will be our new database. So that database is deleted and all the PVC are gone. So now let's just uh, apply this EML. <coughs> 
so this will create a new database we will store this snapshot into the new database so let's get this uh, app binding so one app binding is created that is redis cluster 2 we need to refer this app binding in the restore right so let's just edit the uh, restore yaml so these <coughs> let's rename this restore session and <coughs> in the app binding we need to refer this name so the name is redis cluster 2 so and we want to store the latest snapshot <coughs> So uh, let's wait a few moments for this to be ready. If this is ready, then we can uh, apply this restore YAML and it will be again restored the data. So now uh, this cluster is provisioning. So this is the empty database, right? There is no data in the Redis cluster 2 database. And uh, so we want to store this data in a new database. So all the data will be stored. <coughs> okay so let's get this redis object okay so this is in redis state now we can do our operation so let's uh, apply this restore ml so you can see uh another restore session is created new redis restore we have renamed the now and it is in running state so another pod is created so this pod will uh, do the restore work so it will go to this gcs bucket and uh, pull that data from there and store this data in this new database so when this is successful we will can see that the data is here so we will find the key and value there <coughs> Let's wait a few moments for this to be uh, successful. Yeah, so this is successful. Now let's verify if we have uh, restored this data. So this is the name of the pod. Now let's see if we have the data. Yeah, we have the data. So this was a new database and we have restored our old data in this database. okay uh so uh this is the restore process as you can see it is just it is a simple process you can just uh note uh to a stash crd to re re backup and restore your data so if you want to do this manually you need to uh do many work so we have uh, done that automation in our uh, stash using a stash so uh, let's move on now uh i want to recap what we have shown today so uh, we have first uh, deployed a redis cluster and inserted some dummy data there and after that we have uh, we have taken backup of that data and then we created two different disaster scenarios and then restored the data in both scenarios <laughs>